If you haven't seen, the folks at Titans of CNC have been busy cranking out some incredible parts through their partnership with Mastercam. One of the standouts from the Boombastic show was this titanium mill turn part programmed by Tyson on their 9-axis Doosan Puma SMX 3100. Let's take a deeper dive into how we take advantage of the machine capabilities to do the multi-axis programming of this part in Mastercam. All right, so I've got this Boombastic part open and we're looking at the left side spindle here in our Doosan Puma SMX3100. And what we're going to be talking about is these contoured slots on the leading edge of the part. Now, full radius slots such as you see here are traditionally a very tough shape to determine how to process. Do you nibble away at it in a you know, waterline style going deeper and deeper? Do you take one huge tool and rough down the center and then try to clean up the sides? Um, there's no right answer uh, and it really depends on your, your process, your uh, tooling and the material. So in this case, during Boombastic, we actually chose to go after it with a kind of down the center approach with a bigger uh, ball mill. But what I want to go through today is the process of how we would set up a multi-axis tool path for a shape like this and zero in on the exact kind of axis control that we want to get a good cut out of this. So I'm going to fire up a parallel tool path. And this may not be traditionally what you would think to go after with this because when a lot of people see parallel they think of a waterline style constant uh, step down parallel to an edge or a surface but actually parallel can respect true 3d step overs on a part for a tool here i'm going to use this quarter inch ball end mill so that we can better see some of the step over uh, choices we have to make on this kind of shape and uh, the way we might have to process it in the real world for setup, I'm going to use the upper left axis combo. And for cut pattern, I'm going to stay parallel to curves. And the curve I'm going to use is this actual U shape around the top edge of the slot. Let's bump our step over down to about 20 thousandths. And the cutting method, I'm just gonna change to one way um, because I really want to try and climb cut this contour all the way around as I come down into the slot. Now, this is where we start getting into a common workflow that I use for five axis paths. Tool axis control, I'm going to leave at five axis and we're just going to obey the, the actual surface vector to control the tool tilt. Now, this isn't going to be what we end up for a final path. On collision control, I'm going to turn everything off. So what I'm doing here is I'm simplifying what the path is calculating at this stage because I really want to see uh, the pure base pattern that I'm generating on this surface before I add complexity and constraint into it by trying to uh, limit or restrict my tool axis movement or modify it with collision control. So I really just want to see that I've got a good pattern to start with. The drive surfaces that I want to cut against are the entire slot here. Let's take a look at what that gives us. All right, so right away I see that my, my green lead-in entry is at the bottom of the slot. That's actually the reverse of what I want. So I know I have to go back into the tool path and adjust that, but let's look at the rest of this path. This looks pretty good. Remember, I'm just looking at the base path right now. So the blue lines here, I can see that these purple transitions, I probably want to modify later. And I see one issue here where the right side of this slot, you can see the tool path kind of arcs out in a way. And I'll explain why that's happening in just a second. And then the last thing I notice here is that I'm not starting at the exact surface edges on these slots. So 
So I want to change that as well. So let's go back into the toolpath. So to flip the start position, I'll just flip the sorting step over. So now I'm starting on the top edge. And to adjust the cut, so I'm starting at the very top edge of the slot, I'll change my type calculation to full start and end at exact surface edges. So I actually go all the way up to that sharp corner. Now to adjust that step over issue that I saw at the bottom of the slot, I'm going into the advanced options for surface quality here and I'm going to change the step over calculation method from approximate to exact. What this does is go to a more complex true geodesic step over when you're calculating the actual step over passes in parallel off that top curve. This is only something I have to do when I have a shape like this slot that transitions from vertical to horizontal in a very um, short distance where I really have to take a close look and calculate those step overs um, in a much uh, more exacting manner for lack of a better term. I need to rigidly obey what the actual cut geometry is. So now that we've made those three changes, let's recalculate this path and see what we get. So that looks pretty good. I've got what I wanted out of the bottom passes here. I've got my top pass that starts at the top edge of the slot. And my lead in is on the top and not the middle. If I just back plot this again, Obviously I have problems, right? Because I haven't addressed the tool pointing motion at all yet. The only thing I'm concerned about at this stage is making sure my step overs and my path position is exactly what I want out of this slot. Now I can safely go on to tool axis control and narrow in exactly what I want and know that my initial path shape is great. So in tool axis control, we're going to restrict this to four axis. And in the additional options here, we're going to limit the tool so it points the tool to the rotary axis always. So basically, when we regenerate this path and take a look at what it's doing, now see how radically our blue lines changed here. The blue line represents the actual tip of the tool. And since we're staying locked to four axis and we're always pointed at the center line of the part, we get a much different result out of these blue lines. So now what I've got is this nice clean motion where I'm just rotating the part around and coming down towards the center of this slot. And let me turn these points off so we can see that tool path a little better. So that looks awesome. That's a nice constant step down, step over that respects this geometry very well and gets down to the bottom of the slot. I see a couple things I want to address here still. That's this linking, these purple link lines and the actual lead into the part, which right now is just a straight down plunge to the start of the path. So these are the last little things that I want to tweak to make this path perfect. I'll jump back into parallel and I'll look on the linking tab to address these. Right now, both small and large gaps are set to direct and the small gap size is zero. With these controls, I can basically split the gap behavior of this toolpath into two different groups and then address them individually. So if my small gap size was say anything under one inch as a gap, I would use this small gap behavior. So let's do that and we'll set blend spline instead of direct. And let's regenerate. This is what I get out of that. So this is something that I'd be much more apt to put on a machine versus the original direct result. 
what we have here is instead of stopping at the very end of the cut portion of the path and then forcing the machine to instantaneously accelerate at a right angle, we're adding this transition spline that gets us from the end of the pass back to the start of the next pass in one graceful arc that allows the machine to decelerate and accelerate smoothly so there's none of those hard stops. And this might actually transition faster in some cases than just a shortest distance move between the end of one pass and the start of another. And this is going to look a lot cleaner and it's going to be a lot easier on the machine itself. So that looks pretty good. The last thing I'm going to do is address that lead in. So for first entry, I'm going to turn on lead in. And for a lead in, I like to use a vertical arc in cases like this. Let's regenerate that one more time and take a look. So now we have this nice vertical tangential arc that comes into the part and then starts that first pass. And then we're working our way all the way down to the bottom in one smooth, fluid, unbroken path. So the important concepts that we just demonstrated there to building this multi-axis path was the, the workflow that we actually went through, which was to start with the cut pattern and get our nice cut pattern and then add our complexity in slowly as we worked through what we wanted the path to be. And that made it very easy to narrow in on exactly the motion we wanted to see on this part. Make sure to check out the rest of the parts that were cut for the Titans of CNC Boombastic show. And stay tuned for more advanced programming how-tos from Mastercam.